This is our second group of innovators today. I'd like to introduce you to first Broderick Cotton. Broderick's a senior at Downers Grove North. Spends quite a bit of time working at Jewel and working on cars and trucks with his father. He has plans to attend COD with plans to transfer to the University of Illinois and major in mechanical engineering. Broderick Cotton. Next, Broderick is Brad Toy. He's also a senior at Downers Grove North. He enjoys go-karting and skateboarding. Plans to attend COD with possible transition to Purdue or Illinois State University. Wants to work in the automotive motorsports career as a career. So that's Brad Toy. Then we have Nick Hayes. He's a senior at Downers Grove North. He is a Lego enthusiast. And when he said that, his face lit up. He is thoroughly a Lego enthusiast. He also enjoys video gaming. Plans on working through the 3 plus 1 program with COD and Lewis University in law enforcement. So it's an interesting group. They've come up with a, an interesting concept. I'm going to let them present it to you. I think you're going to like this presentation. Gentlemen. Hi, my name is Nick. We got Broderick and Brad. And I'm going to start this presentation off with a question. How many of you drove a vehicle here today? Okay. Next question. How many of you hate paying for gas? Awesome. Now, at PMI, one of the biggest problems today in the world is suffering with pollution. This pollution is largely caused by fuels caused by fuels in the air because of internal combustion engines. Now, instead of trying to just buy more cars with that release toxic fumes from our exhaust into the air, why don't we try something different? Companies like Nissan, Toyota, and Nissan, Toyota, and Chevy are already trying this idea with using electric cars, such as the Nissan Leaf, the Toyota Prius, and the Chevy Bolt. Now, at PMI, we don't try to, we're not trying to use electricity in our vehicles. We are trying to use air. Now, we're starting off small with the conversion of a four-cycle long power engine, but we plan with having big futures. Uh, so, during the design process of our prototype, we asked uh, 15 volunteers to take a quick survey. Uh, this uh, survey's first question was, uh, on average, how much do you pay for gas in a week? And uh, a majority of the responders answered with more than $40. Uh, the next question on the survey was, uh, how much would you be willing to never pay to fill your vehicle again? And uh, most of the uh, takers of the survey said, like, between $5,000 and $7,000, but few were willing to pay more than double. For the final question on the survey uh, was, would you rather have your current vehicle retrofitted or converted with a compressed air engine or a brand new vehicle? And the majority of the takers of the survey also said uh, that they would rather have their car converted rather than buying a brand new one. As I said before, some of the similar solutions that have come up were the big brands like Nissan, Chevy, and Toyota. One of the biggest attempts, though, was a small, low-key company called the Motor Developing International. This company started in 2002 with plans to make the world's first compressed air-powered car. In 2009, MDI's AirPod was featured in the Geneva Motor Show in Switzerland. In September of 2013, MDI stated that their car will be manufactured in Italy and would start production for public use in 2014. As of early 2015, no models have yet to be produced. Our solution was, is that unlike the AirPod, we don't plan on making an entirely new vehicle. We decided that an engine conversion kit would be cheaper and you get to keep the comfort of your own vehicle. Because why would you want to learn a 
completely new layout of a vehicle when you can just stay in the comfort and luxury of your own. All right, so a couple of other solutions were a four cycle um, engine that was a little different than ours, and two cycle. Both of those that meet all of our requirements for our motor, um, such as some of them weren't self starting, and one of them actually did not start running on air, it started on gas. So it, uh, throwing emissions and uh, they uh, were as efficient as what we were trying to come up with. Alright, the science behind it, uh, the internal combustion engine works by putting air and fuel into the motor through a system of valves driven off of the crank and the camshaft to compress that gas and then ignite it while it's compressed to be able to continue the rotation of the motor and then releasing the gas and letting in more new fuel air mix to reignite and continue the process. The innovation we had would be to, instead of putting fuel and air into it, just by putting high amounts of compressed air, the high PSI so has enough force to mimic that explosion of the gas and fuel to rotate the motor over and continue the cycles. Our uh, next steps would be to find it down to its self-contained uh, unit and hopefully try to convert it over to an actual like, car setup to start like making prototypes of this uh, product. Here's uh, some pictures of what our prototype is looking like. Um, here are the 3D printed pieces that we've made to be able to adapt an air system to the motor. Throughout this project, we want to thank a few specific people. Uh, we would like to thank Ms. Johnson, who, as said prior, is not available to make it today, but we would like to thank her for making these 3D printed parts that you folks are currently looking at. We'd like to thank her for making those possible. Another person we would like to thank would be Mr. Kinsick for constantly taking time out of his schedule to allow us to work on this motor. <laughs> um, and just allowing us to make sure it's actually becoming possible. We would like to thank Mr. Carr for giving us tips on how to make this presentation socially acceptable. And we would also like to thank the Technology Center of DuPage for letting us take one of your engines, dissect it, and make a monster out of it. Is there any questions? Uh, did you guys actually run the motor with the thruster? We got a two second grace period with it running on its own. The question is, you know, why did you pick four cycle or two cycle? Four cycle was the only engine out there in the area. I mean, this was kind of ambitious because like other people have tried doing the same thing too. What was your source of compressed air? Just a compressor, just an air compressor. Okay. Why it's worth for the future, we were going to can make a smaller air compressor that would fit onto the engine to where it would recycle its own air. It would recycle its own air. Okay, what would be your energy source? I mean, you have to have a source of energy to compress the air so the car can move, right? We were going to have a, a tank full of air to start the cycle of the motor, and then by turning the crank, we'd have the second Pressure on there, yeah. refill the tank, keep it pressurized at a point where it continues to run the motor. Okay. Did you videotape any of the activities you were doing? Yes. You did? Did you show any of that?
last video, um, the threads actually stripped out of the 3D part because they were a uh, coarse thread, so they didn't have enough threads on the part to be able to maintain the pressure in the cylinder. Excellent job, guys. This is an ambitious project. It takes a courageous attempt to do something that clearly um, I think all of us would like to see happen.